Here we go. Okay, awesome. Today we have operations with polynomials, which means we're going to add polynomials, subtract polynomials, multiply polynomials, all that lovely uh, stuff. And then after this, hopefully we can get into the first part of percent proportions and all that. Okay. So starting with number one, we want to perform the indicated operations. So number one says 3a plus 2a squared plus 3a cubed minus a plus 2a squared minus 3a cubed. So what we want to do here is simplify these polynomials and combine the like terms. So for number one, the very first thing we're going to do is distribute this negative. We're going to distribute this negative to all three terms. And the first the first parentheses we can drop, so we can rewrite this as 3a plus 2a squared plus 3a cubed. And now after distributing that negative, we'll have minus a minus 2a squared and plus 3a cubed. Okay, so we've distributed the negative, and now all we have to do is combine our like terms. And I'm going to start with the highest power first, only because it's proper to do so. So we look for the highest power. We have a, a squared, and a cubed. So I have a 3a cubed and a 3a cubed. Add those together, and I will get 6a cubed. And then I look at the next highest power, which is going to be a squared. 2a squared minus 2a squared, what's going to happen to those terms? They'll cancel out. They will cancel. And then I'll look at the last power, a and a. So I have a 3a and a negative a, and yes, 3a minus a gives me a positive 2a. And that is it. Any questions on that? Do you always have to change the last sign? Uh, of why this became positive? Yes. So remember that became positive because when you distribute the negative, it changes all the signs. So when I distributed that negative, this was a positive A, but it became negative A. That was a positive two, that became negative. And then negative times negative becomes what? Positive. positive. So that's why the last one became positive. Does that make sense? No, but okay. <laughs> so uh, I guess another way to put it is if you have a negative in front, it's understood that there's a negative one in front. So you're just multiplying everything in that parentheses by negative one. So negative times a positive is negative negative and then negative times a negative becomes positive. All right, don't worry, we'll have more examples. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next one is 3a plus 2a squared plus 3 fifths a cubed plus 6a minus 2 fifths a squared minus 3a squared. Now we see that these terms are connected by addition. So there's nothing to distribute into the parentheses to the right. That means for this problem, we just take the parentheses off. So 3a plus 2a squared plus 3 fifths a cubed plus 6a minus 2 fifths a squared minus 3a cubed. So everything remains the same. And now, again, combine your like terms. First up, highest power, 3 fifths a cubed minus 3 a cubed. So let's look at that fraction work on the side. OK, so I'm just going to leave the a cubes out for now. And what we're looking at is 3 fifths minus three. So to combine these two 
terms together, we need to find a what? Common denominator. Good. Put three over one and multiply by the common denominator of five. This will give me three fifths minus 15 fifths, which gives me negative 12 fifths. So that's what three fifths minus three is. And that's going to go first on the next line. So it's going to be negative 12 fifths a cubed. OK. And then we look at the next power, which is our squares. I have 2a squared and negative 2 fifths a squared. Ooh, more fraction work, right? So let's pull that to the side. 2 minus 2 fifths. Now for this one, we can get a common denominator again, or you can use the fraction trick. What's 2 times 5? Ten. What's 10 minus 2? <laughs> 10 minus 2? Anybody? Eight. 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 You're left with 8 fifths. There you go. All right. And now that's going to go next. You'll have plus 8 fifths a squared. And then we look at the last terms. I have a 3a and a 6a. And they're both positive, so that leaves me with 9a. A squared? You don't just, count second a? Just a. So 3a plus 6a. So 3a plus 6a is just 9a. That's it. If it was 3a times 6a, then this would actually become 18a squared. So there's a difference between adding like terms and multiplying like terms. So be very careful with that. Okay, any questions on this one? Okay, next. Doing the same thing for this problem. So three, two sevenths a plus two a squared plus three fifths a cubed minus parentheses a minus two sevenths a squared minus three a cubed. Okay, so to start this one off, what do we have to distribute? The negative. The negative. This negative will go here, here, and here and change all our signs of that second parentheses, of that second term inside the parentheses. So first one stays the same, drop the parentheses, 2 sevenths a plus 2a squared plus 3 fifths a cubed. Now we distribute that negative, negative 1 times a, negative a. Negative 1 times negative 2 sevenths, positive 2 sevenths a squared, and negative 1 times negative 3a squared, positive 3, I mean cubed, 3a cubed. Okay, we have successfully distributed the negative, and now we're going to combine like terms just like we did in the last three, starting with our highest power first. 3 fifths a cubed plus 3a cubed. All right. 3 fifths plus 3. You can use the fraction trick on this one just to make it fast. What is 3 times 5? 15. What is 15 plus 3? 18. You get 18 over 5a cubed. Okay. There's that. And now we go to the next power, 2a squared and 2 sevenths a squared. So let's pull those out to the side. 2 plus 2 sevenths. Fraction trick, 
What is two times 14? I mean, <laughs> what is two times seven? 14. <laughs> and 14 plus two? 17. You get oh, 16. 16 <laughs> over seven, A squared. There we go. Okay. And the last ones. You have two sevenths A minus A. So two sevenths A minus A. So that's going to be represented by two sevenths minus one. Now here we can't use that fraction trick. So here we'll just get a common denominator. We'll put one over one and multiply by the common denominator of seven. And you'll get two sevenths minus seven sevenths, which gives me what? Negative five over seven. Negative five <laughs> over seven. Good. So now we get <laughs> negative five over seven A. And there it is. Beautiful fractions. Okay. So, any questions on those three that we just did? Okay. All right. All right. Good. The negative five sevenths. Mm -hmm. A. Uh, we have to change that sign at the end. Uh, we change that, so we change it to negative five sevenths because uh, the operation is two sevenths minus one. So one is actually bigger, therefore the final result becomes negative. Oh, that's gonna mess me up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, so. Now on to number four. We have four X minus three squared. So what we're gonna do for number four is expand and multiply. So four X minus three squared, since it's to the power of two, means I have two copies of what's inside the parentheses. So four X minus three squared, can be expanded to 4x minus 3 times 4x minus 3. Okay. And we have to expand in order to simplify this. So after we expand it, we are now going to multiply both of these terms together. And since they're binomials, since they are two term polynomials, we get to use a special method. Anybody know what that's called? Foil. 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 Good. I was going to say it's, it's going to say I was going to say it starts with an F. It's your favorite F word. Foil. Okay. So when we foil this, we do the first terms together. So four x times four x. There's the first terms together. And what is 4x times 4x? 16x squared. And then you do the first term and the outer term. So here is the O, 4x times negative 3. There's the O. And what is 4x times negative 3? Negative 12x. Negative 12x. And then we do the inner with the first term. So there's our i. What is negative 3 times 4x? Negative 12x. Negative 12x. And then we do the last terms right there. Negative 3 times negative 3. What is negative 3 times negative 3? Positive nine. There's your FOIL method. Beautiful. And then 
after you expand and foil, you will simplify, just like we did in the last three problems. So we look at the highest power first, of course, 16x squared. Do you see any other x squareds in this problem? No. No. So that means it comes down. And then we move on, we move on to the next terms, negative 12x, oh, it's a different color. Negative 12x minus 12x. What does that become? Zero. Negative oh, 24x. Good. Negative 24. Because it's it's going more negative, right? So this becomes negative 24x. And what's left over? Nine. Nine. There you go. We have successfully foiled those two polynomials. All right. Why do you have to times the 12x and the 12x? Neg negative 12 and negative 12. So we don't times them because what are they connected by? Yeah, I was thinking they would cancel out. Yeah, so they're connected by subtraction. So think about it, you're going more negative. You owe the bank $12 and then you didn't pay up in time. So they take another $12. Does that go to zero or does that go to you owe the bank negative $24? Okay. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Put it in terms of money, and people are like, that's my money. Don't mess with my money. <laughs> it's my money, and I need it now. Okay. All right. Cool. So that is foiling, and it can only be done between two binomials, meaning two two term polynomials. Okay. Now, number five, same thing, but we cannot FOIL. The first term, yes. The first term is a binomial. It's two terms. But the second term has one, two, three terms. It's a trinomial. So FOILing won't work here. So we just use the good old distributing process when multiplying two polynomials together. Yes, FOIL falls under distributing, but distributing could be many things. So. Here's how we're going to distribute these two polynomials. So where's my pen? There we go. We're going to start with the first term, x. And we're going to say x times x squared. What does that give me? x cubed. x cubed. Good. If you're wondering where we got that from, the power of this x is 1. And whenever you multiply variables together, you add the exponents. So x to the first times x squared gives me x cubed. And then we still stick with the first term and we multiply that middle term. What is x times 3x? 3 x squared. 3x squared. And then x times 9 is just like it sounds, 9x. So there's the first part of the distribution. Now we have one more part. We have to take this negative 3 and distribute it to those three terms as well. So negative 3 times x squared, negative 3x squared. Negative 3 times 3x. What's negative 3 times 3x? 3x squared. So it's just, just multiply the numbers. Negative 3 times 3 is? 3. Ne negative 9. Negative 9x. And then one more distribution to finish it off. What is negative 3 times 9? 27. 27. Negative 27. There you go. Now, of course, we have to clean up. And we start with the highest power, which is x cubed. Do you see any other x cubes in this problem? No. no. So it comes down. The next one is x squared. So I have a 3x squared and a negative 3x squared. What's going to happen? Cancel. Cancel. 
And then I have X's. I have 9X and negative 9X. What's going to happen there? Cancel. Cancel. So all we're left with is X cubed minus what number? 27. Minus 27. There you go. All right, how are we doing? Professor, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. So on the on problem number four, we did two binomials, and on problem mm -hmm. five, the FOIL method works when you do a this what is it called? A binomial and what's the other three? A trinomial. So trinomial. on number five, FOIL doesn't work because it's a binomial times a trinomial. A two-term polynomial times a three-term polynomial, we just distribute normally. On number four, it was a binomial times a binomial, so we can use what it's called the FOIL method. FOILing is still distributing, but we put a name behind it. All right, does that make sense? Yes, sir, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's keep going. Number six. R minus six times R minus three minus parentheses three R plus two R squared minus seven. Okay, awesome. So for this one, we have a couple of operations we need to do. Since this is a binomial times a binomial, we're gonna use what method? FOIL. FOIL. And then on this one, all we have to do is distribute what? Negative one. The negative. Good. You're going to distribute that negative. Okay. So we distribute the negative. So let's go ahead and FOIL these two. All right. So what is R times R? R squared. R squared. What is R times negative three? Three R. Negative three R. What is negative six times R? Six R. Negative. What is negative six times negative three? Positive 18. Positive 18. Cool. So we have foiled that one. And now we are going to distribute that negative. Negative one times three R, negative three R. Negative one times two R squared, negative two R squared. Negative one times negative seven, positive seven. Okay. Now, everything is distributed out, distributed did out, and let's go ahead and combine like terms, starting with the highest power first. And we see we have an R squared here and an R squared there. What is one R squared minus two R squared gonna give me? R squared. But it will be? Three R squared. Negative, Negative. R squared. Because <laughs> you have to think about it. It's one minus two. So it becomes negative R squared. Okay. And then we look at our R's. Negative 3R minus 6R minus 3R. What is negative 3 minus 6? Negative 9. Negative 9. And then we have to tack on that last 3. So what's negative 9 minus 3? Negative 12. Negative 12. You get negative 12R. And then... We are left with 18 plus seven. What does that give me? 25. 25. That's it. Painless, right? Okay. So any questions? Let me zoom out a bit. I'll move it like that. Any questions on this page? Nope. Nope. Okay. 
Let's keep moving then. All right. So applications with polynomials. So number seven, write the polynomial that represents the perimeter of the triangle. Okay. Does anybody know how to find the perimeter of a triangle? Isn't it like uh, base times height or one half the base? That time? is great, but that is area. It's width and height. So area deals with the inside. Perimeter deals with the outside of the triangle. So, and it's okay if you don't know. The length, width, and height. Uh, well, length, width, and height would deal with a rectangle or a square. Triangles don't really have a length, width, or height. I don't remember if I'm right, but a squared plus b squared plus uh, c squared. I think. You guys are throwing all the formulas out for me. Okay, so what you oh, no. just threw out is something called a Pythagorean theorem, and that solves for the sides of a, it just solves for the sides of a right triangle. So, we now, we were given the, uh, the area, we were given the Pythagorean theorem, but all I'm looking for is the perimeter. Daddy, so you, know, add, you add all sides? What was that? Add all sides. Add all three <laughs> sides. That's it. That's it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and if, our, if you're on your computer right now, you could use the power of Google's. Type in Google, say, hey, Google. What is the what is the perimeter or how do you find the perimeter of a triangle? And guess what? It'll pop the formula for you right right away. That's exactly what I just did. <laughs> Good. So it's side plus side plus side. I'll say side one plus side two plus side three. So that's all we're gonna do here. We're gonna add all three of these sides together. Okay. And we'll start with highest power first. X. What is 3x squared plus 2x squared? Five. Huh? 5x squared. What is what? negative 4x plus 4x plus 5x? Fourteen. 14x? Hmm. 5x. Just 5x, because what happens with this negative 4 and that 4? They cancel. So all you're left with is 5x. And then you add up your constants, your numbers. 9 minus 10 plus 3. What does that give me? 2. 2. And there you go. That's how you find the perimeter of a triangle. And it was okay if you didn't know. What's great if you have your cell phone, if you have your computer, which maybe you're on, go to Google and say, hey, what is the perimeter of a triangle? And right there, after you hit enter, it puts it on the front of, of the screen. Pretty cool. All right. Which is now gonna take us into the next problem. Find the polynomial that represents the area of the shaded region. Okay. Well, for this one, we need to know the formula for the area of a square. So somebody find me the formula for the area of a square. In time, wait, time height. That would be volume. Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while <laughs> it's okay it says well what formula did it give you on google a equals a squared a equals a squared okay i hate using the same letter so i'm just going to say a equals s squared basically area is side times side that's it and s times s side times side would be s squared okay but our goal in this problem is just to find the area of this shaded region. And if you notice, we have how many squares? 
two. So how do I just find the area of the shaded region? Wouldn't you subtract the inner square? Very good. Very good. So here's what we're going to do for our area. We're going to first take the sides on the outside of the big triangle and multiply them together. 2x minus 5 times 2x minus 5. So that's going to represent the area of the big, did I say triangle or square? <laughs> I think I said triangle, whatever. So this represents the area of the bigger square. And now we are going to subtract the area of the inner square, which is x times x. OK, so we are all set up to find the area of the shaded region. So now all we have to do is foil the first two, multiply the last two, and simplify. OK, so let's do that. And when we foil, what is 2x times 2x? 4x squared. 4x squared. What is 2x times negative 5? Negative 10x. Negative 10x. Do we get the same thing here? Negative 5 times 2x? Negative 10x. Negative 10x. And what is negative 5 times negative 5? Positive 25. Positive 25. And what is x times x? x squared. <laughs> x squared. OK. It's all foiled out. It's all multiplied. Now combine like terms. Start with your highest power first. And we have 4x squared minus x squared. What does that give me? 3x squared. Good. 3x squared. And then we have negative 10x minus 10x. What does that give me? Negative 20x. Negative 20x. <laughs> Good. And what's left over? 25. 25. This represents the area of the shaded region of the bigger square. OK. Great. So you see how it's all related to everything we've done so far. We are still combining like terms. We are still multiplying and simplifying. So any questions on this page? All good then? Okay. Two more. Write the polynomial that represents the perimeter of the parallelogram. <laughs> so, what is the formula for the perimeter of a parallelogram? Look at those Google fingers going, right? Isn't it height? times two and then base times two for the perimeter? Uh, well, there's not necessarily a height on a parallelogram. Oh, not the height, the width? width? Lengths and width, that's what it is. <laughs> well, lengths <laughs> would work for, for a rectangle, but I get what you're saying. So in terms of a parallelogram, it is going to be this side plus this side plus this side plus this side. So again, you just add them all up. <laughs> So it means that if we add all of these up, what is 2x plus 3x plus 2x plus 3x? What does that give me? 10x. 10x. What is 1 plus 4 plus 1 plus 4? 10. 10. And that's it. That's the parallel. That's the perimeter of that parallelogram. Oh my god! <laughs> All right. <laughs> there you go. I think the formula, though, I think this is represented as a. That's a. This is represented as b, and that's b. And I think the formula is two <laughs> times base times. Oh yeah. Two a times, times a plus b. That's it. Okay. 
cool. Learning some things today, right? I'm scared. <laughs> All right. I can leave it right there. And then number 10, write the polynomial that represents the total number of square feet for the floor pan below. Okay. Well, what shape does this whole floor plan make? Square. A rectangle or a square? Rectangle. Rectangle. It's definitely a rectangle. And if you're dealing with square feet, is that perimeter or area? Area. Area. Good. So this means we need to know the formula for the area of a rectangle. What is the formula for the area of a rectangle? Length times width times height. There you go. No, just just that. <laughs> I've been waiting to say that. Okay. <laughs> just length times width. That's it. That is the area of a rectangle. You really want to get the height out, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So with that being said, let's look at the length of our rectangle. And we can choose either one. We'll just look at this side. Let's look at this length. So to make this total length, what is a polynomial that I could write? 12 plus x. Thank you. 12 plus x. And then look at this width. What polynomial could represent the length? I mean the width. X plus 6. X plus okay. 6 plus... 24. There you go. Okay. So this is the area. These are the terms that will represent the area of this rectangle. And now let's go ahead and clean it up because can we add that 6 and the 24? Yes. Yes, so we get 12 plus x times x plus 30. And now we have two binomials. So what method can we use here? Foil. Foil, let's do it. So area, 12 times x, 12x. What is 12 times 30? 360. 360. And then x times x, x squared, and then x times 30, 30x. Okay, now let's just rearrange it, starting with the highest power first. And we see that we have x squared. Any other x squareds in there? No. No. So we'll bring that guy down. And then we go to our x's. What is 12x plus 30x? 42. 42x. And what is left? 360. 360. So this polynomial represents the area of this floor plan. Okay, awesome. So that finishes these notes. So if you notice that you're missing something on the notes you printed out, you should see something called greatest common factor. I don't want to introduce that until we actually get into factoring. So this is where these notes will stop. I cut out, I cut out the greatest common factor and want to bring it in later. So these ones, these notes are done. So any questions over these notes? All right, which means I'll stop recording on this one and we can get into the next section. Oh, come on, Zoom, work with me. There we go. Stop recording and...